Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. Space junk, it's everywhere these days. Since 1957, when the Soviet Union's Sputnik 1 was launched to space, we sent thousands of satellites up. Just look at this graph of the number of launches that we have every year. The last decade is absolutely terrifying. Space debris mitigation is high on the agenda of space bodies like ESA and NASA, and even the UN. We've seen several private companies also step up to monitor, deorbit, or even remove space junk. But this week's video is about why we might need to think twice about this. So let's begin. On the 4th of October 1957, Soviet Union launched the first ever satellite, Sputnik 1, into a low Earth orbit. The polished metal sphere with four external radio antenna to broadcast radio signals that could be picked up by any amateur radio operator. Over the course of 22 days, scientists monitored the spacecraft and it had a big impact on our scientific knowledge. From the drag of the orbit, we learned about the density of the upper atmosphere and the ions. And the radio signals allowed them to understand how humans in space could communicate with Earth. After the end of the mission, Sputnik 1 slowly deorbited. It burned up on re-entry of the Earth's atmosphere. It wasn't until 2002 that the 25-year rule came in that limited loitering in space post-operation to just 25 years. Just last year, this was shortened to five years with the hope that the space debris problem will become more manageable. Of course, too much space debris is a problem. Space debris in low Earth orbit is traveling at tremendous speeds, at about 15,000 miles per hour. In case of a collision, not only would this cause significant damage to an operating satellite, but the smash could create thousands of more pieces of debris that will go on and cause more collisions. You'd get this runaway collision effect known as the Kessler effect. But when Sputnik 1 was destroyed on re-entry, so was its history. Just like how some people like to argue that the first moon landings was faked, Sputnik 1 could also have been a fake. There is no physical evidence that it exists. Sputnik 2 launched just a month after Sputnik 1. It carried a stray dog named Laika to space. Sputnik 2 didn't re-enter Earth's atmosphere until six months after the launch, but Laika died of overheating just hours into the flight. Again, there is no evidence of this moment in history. So was it actually real? On the other hand, when Neil Armstrong first stepped on the moon, he left footprints on the moon that will remain there for millions of years. There's no wind to blow them away. The Lunar Legacy Project, which I will link down below, lists some of the inventory, which includes a TV camera and hammer, among many hundreds of other things. Similarly, other spacecraft landing wreckage sites are littered throughout the surface of the moon and Mars. The location of the first moon landings, the Tranquility Base, should be a World Heritage Site. And in the short future, when humans flood to the moon, if the site isn't protected, then what will prevent the deterioration or destruction of the grounds and the artifacts? How can we maintain a historical record of Apollo 11? Not only does space archaeology preserve the history of our space race and technological advancement for our future generations, it can also help us learn about signs to look out for when searching for other intelligent life. Maybe in the future, we spot some spacecraft wreckage on some exoplanet somewhere in our galaxy. It would be a clue that some intelligent life form is possibly close by, like a trail of breadcrumbs pointing to life. And similarly, if we want to be found by extraterrestrials, shouldn't we leave them a trail of space junk to follow? We don't have the capabilities to see so far away yet, but we can practice searching for wreckage sites closer to home on the Moon and Mars to begin with. Also, note that the next nearest solar system, Proxima Centauri, is 4.3 light years away, which means that light takes over four years to reach us. But it could be that the next nearest signs of life don't exist for distances of millions of light years away. 
Anything that we can see for a telescope would be looking into the past. So to understand how technology advances on alien civilizations, we would have to project based on our own histories and our own developments. And when we find an advanced alien civilization, we're not just going to care about their amazing technology, but we want to know how they got there, what revolutionized them. Currently, the oldest satellite in orbit is Vanguard 1. It launched in 1958. It's a key artifact in examining human encounters with space over time and the effects that we leave through man-made objects. Do we really want to destroy this? Do we really want to deorbit all spacecraft? Or should we find a safer way to preserve the technology, perhaps put them in a space graveyard or even store them in a space museum? Let me know your thoughts. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.